Sponsored by Incogni. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Then quit. No use being a damn fool about it. But seriously, I respect anyone who comes back to the plate after striking out, and the OnePlus Watch 2 is such an improvement over the original that I'd have forgiven the company for dropping the two from the name entirely and pretending Gen 1 never existed. This is a solid smartwatch driven by some great ideas at a price point that makes sense. Thing is, a lot of those great ideas came from Google which means we'll soon see them on other watches. And there are enough app oddities and compelling competitors to give me a little bit of pause when it comes to this new Wear OS watch. You know what's great about this hardware? Practically everything. This is a handsome, if beastly, beauty. It's 47 millimeter case size and needed counter to the too small Pixel Watch and a sensible contemporary to Samsung's similarly-sized Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. That case is stainless steel, rated IP68 for dust and water resistance, and tested under 16 subcategories of the mill standard 810H regimen. Its circular platform set off by a flat flourish that adds two pushers and some intentional asymmetry that I like a lot. OnePlus says the design was inspired by vintage automobiles and stopwatches, and I really think the whole vibe just works. Keep in mind that I prefer big watches. My normal daily driver is a mammoth Mark Captain, at least until Garmin takes its review sample back, and so the OnePlus will likely be too big for many folks. But I concur with Joe Mehring over at DT. The watch wears its 80 grams quite lightly on the wrist. And yes, you can swap out the stock straps for any 22mm watch band you like. Power it up and the pluses continue on the AMOLED watch face. Neither the 1.4-inch diameter nor the 326 ppi pixel density are particularly special, but colors pop brightly under the sapphire crystal cover. And the platform producing those colors is the bigger news, the full-fat version of Wear OS 4, complete with Google Assistant. Ever since Google effectively rebooted its wearable platform in 2021, we've been waiting for momentum to return to the long-stagnant Wear OS. And OnePlus's entry into the space is well-timed as an effective counter to the unfortunate exit of Fossil Group. And this isn't just new hardware with the same old software. It's the first watch running the new Dual Architecture Edition of Wear OS. Alongside the Snapdragon W5 chipset that handles the heavy lifting, OnePlus added a secondary coprocessor to take care of the simpler stuff. Now, to be clear, that's nothing new. Coprocessors are common in wearables, and this particular model, the Bez 2700, is in fact already on the market used in this exact same configuration in the Oppo Watch 4 Pro. What's different here is that Google has rebuilt Wear OS so it takes better advantage of that dual chip setup. So it's not just simple stuff like watch faces that save power. You can receive notifications, dismiss them, even quick reply to them without that high power Snapdragon W5 ever needing to spin up. The place that pays off most prominently is of course power consumption. OnePlus made the expected exaggerated battery life claims, but as you know, I don't play that game. I just don't see much use in shoving a smartwatch into a power saving mode to max out its uptime, whereas I do see a lot of utility in a wearable that lets me use any watch face I want, like any smartwatch should do, and one that always shows me the time whether I raise my wrist or not, like every wristwatch should do. And when I used the OnePlus Watch 2 with those features enabled, all but daring the battery to go dead, well, it still lasted me over 75 hours. Three days of hard usage with sleep tracking and lots of notifications, not too shabby when it comes to Wear OS. And with a USB connector that accommodates any Type-C cable, the magnetic fast charger is a win too. But despite its name, the Watch 2 is a first generation product which means it leaves room for improvement in health tracking, basic interface elements, and its phone app. The reasons I'll be going back to Garmin and Google after this. You probably already know that a lot of companies have your phone number, your email address, date of birth, social security number, even the names of your close relatives. But even if you gave this information freely in exchange for a service, it's common for companies to sell that information to others. 
And every time that happens, it increases the chance that your information will be stolen in a data breach. Well, today's sponsor, Incogni, was built to fight back. It reaches out to those companies on your behalf to ask them to purge that data. When I signed up, Incogni found my information in over 100 databases and started the process of removing it right away. Doing that same thing myself would have taken me weeks or months, especially dealing with data brokers' objections. But Incogni handles that part too, and it's all automatic. I don't need to lift another finger. Take your data back with Incogni. Use code Mr. Mobile at the link in the description for 60% off. Thanks to Incogni for sponsoring this video. Those of you who watched my recent retrospective on the Palm Pre will recall that phone's inspired gesture area, meant to keep your filthy fingers from fudging up your screen. And the equivalent on a smartwatch is what Google used to call the rotating side button, aka the digital crown. Well, this, I guess, is an analog crown, by which I mean it physically rotates, but does nothing. You can't scroll lists or messages, you can't zoom in on a map, you can just futz with it. Which, of course, begs the question, why does it spin at all? Well, I asked OnePlus about that, and the company said a component that rotates is more durable than one that's rigid, which I simply don't believe. I think if you busted open this watch, you might find a sensor that indicates that OnePlus wanted this to be a proper digital crown, but something stood in the way. Yes, that's speculation on my part, and I'm not in the habit of busting open review devices, so, uh, hey Zach, you wanna? Anyway, if you don't care about digital crowns, more power to you and your smudged up screen. But you need to know about the other big compromise. Oh, health. Oh, 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 you know what I'm talking about. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's actually the official app for the watch, despite the Play Store crediting the app maker Bravo Unicorn PTE, which creates, among other illustrious titles, the official games app on some Oppo and Realme phones. As someone who does not give half an egg tart about fitness features, even I found the health tracking wanting. Nearly every one of my fellow reviewers noted vast disparities in step and sleep tracking when comparing the Watch 2 against other fitness wearables. What's worse, OnePlus says there won't be a backup feature for your health data until the end of March. So if you need to switch phones before then, your data doesn't follow you. Ditto if you need to switch which phone your watch is connected to, you gotta factory reset it, something Wear OS 3 solved a long time ago. And sadly, a similar compromise pervades the collection of compatible watch faces. These aren't ugly so much as uninspired, which normally wouldn't be worth mentioning because on Wear OS, I just tend to use Facer. But in order to leverage the power savings of this new architecture, watch faces need to be built in Google's watch face format. And that, right now, limits your selection to something like 80 compatible faces. Bummer. Fortunately, OnePlus still does know how to price. At $299, this undercuts both Google's Pixel Watch and Samsung's Galaxy Watch 6 Classic, and that's not even counting the trade-in program that can net you up to a couple hundred bucks off, depending on what you're giving back. Oh, and I like this. Even if all you've got is an old dumb watch, OnePlus will still give you 50 bucks off if you order by the end of March. Still, you got to keep in mind what else is out there for Wear OS. While I prefer the look of the OnePlus over the Mobvoid TicWatch Pro 5, that watch got me an unprecedented five days of battery life, and it's currently on sale for less, with a working digital crown to boot. If you don't trust Mobvoi to keep your software current, that's fair enough. The non-classic version of Samsung's Watch 6 comes in for less too, with a much more robust and reliable health platform to back it up. With competition like that, and rumors of a bigger Pixel Watch coming when Google refreshes the lineup later in the year, well, while it's nice to see OnePlus try trying again, and by no means do I want it to quit, the Watch 2 is not quite enough to match the smartphone successes that have rightfully had OnePlus back in the headlines recently. This review was made possible by two Watch 2 review samples provided by OnePlus, one of which replaced a unit lost at MWC in Barcelona. Thanks, OnePlus. 
As always, the manufacturer had no editorial input into my conclusions and was given no content approval rights, nor even an early preview of this video. The lone sponsor of this review is Incogni. Please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube if you'd like to see more videos like this. Until next time, from Michael Fisher, Captain Two Phones on Threads, thanks for watching. And stay mobile, my friends.